The long-awaited exciting Procreate 5X update is out. Let's see what's new. The first big change is about color palette. When you open the colors, go to the palettes and tap on this plus button, you now get four options. The old create new palette, new from camera, new from file and new from photo. I'm going to check the camera feature. It has two modes. The first one generates a color palette from whatever is inside that rectangular shape. It is like it is pixelating what camera sees behind it. Another option creates a color palette from what the camera is actually showing. It gives a wider range of colors. This way you can create a color palette from literally whatever is around you. After you take a photo, the generated color palette will appear here. The second option is new from file. If you go there, you can select an image file or swatches. It will appear here as a color palette too. And the last option, new from photo. Here you can select any photo from your gallery and it will be transformed into the color palette. One more cool feature that appeared in the color palettes is that now you can drag and drop the color directly from the palette on your canvas to fill the layer. What I also noticed is that now the only way to change the layer's opacity is to tap on this N icon and use the slider. Before the update, you could also do that in the adjustment section and now this option is gone from the list. Let's go to the brush library to check what's new there. Under airbrushing you can find a few extra brushes for blending such as soft blend, medium blend, medium hard and hard. I'm definitely gonna try these brushes in my future works to see how they perform. Now I'm really excited to check what's new here on the left side. I suggest we begin with the actions bar and here we can see the new feature called reference. It also has a few options. In the first option you can use your canvas as the reference and you will get a kind of navigation window where you can see everything what's going on while drawing and now you don't have to zoom your canvas in and out all the time. You can also pick the color from this window. In the second option you can use the image as a reference which you need to import in this box. This can be very handy because you don't waste a separate layer on the image and you can move it easily all around the screen. You can change its size and also pick the color. Before the update, what I did when I wanted to have a look at the reference photo was adding the photo on the side window. But it wasn't as convenient because I couldn't pick the color from it. The last option here, which is actually fun, is face. Here the drawing will appear on your face as a mask. You can go full screen, take photo or video, and if you turn the camera on, you can see yourself wearing that mask. Can be very entertaining. Or useful if you are creating Instagram filters or something like that. I think the biggest changes that come with the Procreate 5X update can be found here under Adjustments. We can still see the previous options here, but now they can be applied not only on the entire canvas or layer. The new thing is that you can also use your pencil in all the features. Let's see how it works on the Gaussian Blur for example. I will click on the pencil and after that I'm able to select the brush. I will add some strokes on the parts which I want to be blurred. And I can change the amount same way as we did before, by sliding the finger on the canvas. I can also use the eraser here. One of my favorite innovations here is the gradient map, which has also two options. I'm gonna try the pencil first. Here you can see a few gradient schemes. You can try them, play around with the colors, apply it on your layer. 
I can move the sliders, add more colors, change them, delete. Let me also go with the eraser and I can erase the parts where I don't want to see the gradient. After that I will click on done. If you want to create your own gradient, you can simply click on the plus button. Now I want to see how it works on the canvas. For that I will merge these two layers and go to the gradient map. This time I will select the layer. It will be applied immediately as you see. You can swipe and try different gradient maps. There are also a few very cool but specific features. I'm gonna try the bloom first. Let's go with the pencil option. Here you can adjust the transition, size and burn. I can also change the intensity by sliding my finger on the canvas to the right or left. If you tap your finger on the canvas, the menu will appear, where you can see such options as Apply, Undo, Preview, Reset and Cancel. One more feature that is very specific and that I won't most probably use quite often is called Glitch. I want to try this one on the layer. Inside the feature there are a few more options and all of them are adjustable. The first one is Artifact, in which you can change the amount, block size and zoom. On the wave option the settings are a bit different. These are amplitude, frequency and zoom. The signal option looks very similar to artifact and has the same settings. You can also change the intensity by sliding your finger on the screen. The next feature, which is halftone, can be probably used in the comic style but I think I want to try it as well in one of my future drawings, just as an experiment. I will apply it with the pencil and as you see it has a few options here, which can be adjusted with this slider. The next on the list is chromatic aberration and I must say that I loved this one. I will apply it on the layer. In perspective mode you need to move the circle to change the direction and with the slider on top of the canvas, you can adjust the amount. Also there is the opportunity to fix the transition and fall off level. The displace mode looks even cooler to me. For example on Photoshop you need to put much more effort to get this effect. And here you can get different variations simply by sliding your finger around the canvas. You can also change the blur and transparency. And the last feature from the adjustments is the clone tool that actually had minor changes. Before the update you could use only round brush to clone your objects. And now you can apply absolutely any texture brush from your library. Another innovative thing that appeared not only on Procreate but on the iPad in general is the scribble feature. Now you can write inside any text bar using your stylus. I can rename the layer this way, as well as the color palette. If I insert the text, I can type the words with the keyboard as before or write them with the pencil exactly the same way. I can separate the words, select one, change the font or whatever and even erase it. I don't use much text in my work, but probably some designers will find this feature helpful. Ok, if we go to Prefs, Gesture Controls and enable the Touch option in the Quick Menu section, we will see that if I tap on the screen, the Quick Menu will appear. The only difference that I noticed here is that now you are allowed to have a few Quick Menus and use them for different workflows, for example. You can select up to 6 actions that you want to be accessed quickly for each quick menu. There is also a minor change in the menu that appears when you swipe 3 fingers down. It looks a bit different, but has all same options as before. The only difference is that now, instead of copy and paste bar, 
there is the duplicate button. Well, we can find a couple of new options in the selection tool too. The first one is color fill. It works the following way. You can draw a shape with the freehand tool, tap on this closing dot and the shape will be filled with the selected color. If you draw a basic shape such as rectangle or ellipse, they will be filled automatically. We can turn the feature on and off here. If we go to feather and play with the amount, we will see the blurred edges of our shapes. I am sure that the next feature will be appreciated mostly by pattern lovers. At least I will definitely use it while creating new patterns. It can be found under transform tool. Let's go here and turn magnetics on along with the snapping. I will also set the distance and velocity to max. Now I can move the layer or group of layers and it will be snapped to the center, to the edges of the canvas or to a certain degree. We don't have to zoom in all the way to place it right in the center or on the side as we did before in my bird pattern tutorial. This feature makes the entire process so much easier. What is also cool is that if you click on this green dot, there is the option to enter the angle amount in the text bar to rotate the layer or layer group with a certain angle. This can be really very helpful and give you more control over your actions. And if you tap on any of the blue dots, you can change the dimensions into a certain amount. Another new thing that we can see here is this small orange square, which enables us to adjust the bounding box and change the selection. Let's go back to actions and there is this secret option that appears when you swipe with your pencil or finger. Here we can insert a private photo. I will select one and it will appear on the layers as the private layer. This means that whatever you do with the drawing, the private image won't be seen on your time-lapse video. Might seem like a little cheating. Or maybe it's just an opportunity to make beautiful time-lapse videos without messy sketches being seen. You can insert not only a private photo from your gallery, but also a file or take a new photo that will appear on the layers list as private. The last but not the least feature is also located right here. If we click on copy canvas, then paste, we will see that all visible layers have been merged and paste it as one layer. That's all for today. I think some of these new features are very innovative. Which one is your favorite? Let me know in the comment section below. If you like this video, please subscribe and hit that bell icon to be notified about future videos. You can also check my Procreate tutorials here on the left side of the screen. Thank you for watching and see you in the next videos.